Okay, so we had, uh, now we're ready to start making other versions of it. So we're going to make several versions of the prototype. Some of them are going to be, um, how do I want to say it, not much different. Some of them are going to be drastically different. Before um, we get into making another version of the prototype, though, I want to visit a site that shows really the potential of what you can do by applying CSS to web pages. The site is called CSS Zen Garden. And let's take a minute to understand what this site is about. Okay. The idea of this site is that it shows you what you can do with CSS. Back in the old days, before CSS was really mature, I guess is the right word, as a language it had developed and Browsers had a hard time supporting it, and, and so on. But a lot of web developers develop some bad habits. In other words, they use stuff in HTML to accomplish the look, and to change the look, and the appearance, and the layout of the site. And that really limits the flexibility that you have when you do that. I won't go into details about it. Uh, one of the things is a font tag. Uh, using tables to achieve the layout. There's a lot of bad techniques that were done out of necessity because CSS had yet to evolve to the state where it was widely supported across different browsers. We're talking about like maybe the early 2000s. So people developed this site, and I don't remember exactly where. Once CSS became widely supported, to show people, hey, look at all the stuff that we can do with CSS. We can take this one file. Pretty much the entire site is one HTML document <coughs> that has multiple different CSS files applied to it. So this is the default version. And let's notice some of the things here. The word CSS Zen Garden, the beauty of CSS design. A demonstration of what can be accomplished. The road to enlightenment. So what is this about? And so on down the line. Now as we go from page to page, we'll notice the same content is there on every version of the page, yet it's displayed wildly different. All right. So let's go to this one, mid-century modern. That is the same HTML as this. Okay, It's just been displayed differently. And if you look, the beauty of CSS design, CSS Zen Garden, a demonstration of what can be accomplished, the road to enlightenment, and so on. Garments. Steel. Apothecary. Whoops. Click on the wrong link. screen filler, and so on. I think you get the idea. What this is showing you is that you can take the same content and style it so many different ways and make it look drastically different, all without changing the HTML. 
All these different versions of this page that I've showed you today have the same HTML, except for one thing, and that one thing is it uses a different style sheet. That's the only difference between all the different versions of this page. So, I encourage you, again, to not just make one prototype, but to make a couple prototypes using the different techniques we saw. And we'll go over examples of different techniques that you can use to make your page look different. Of course, there's things like colors, all right, and fonts, and background images. Those can really make it dif uh, look different. But you can also do things like the way the page is laid out. And that's what we're going to look at in the examples uh, that I give in class. So let's download the last one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a lot of copies of the folder with the prototype. And I will just change the CSS file to show different variations of things that we can do. And we'll explore different aspects of CSS as we do this. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So here's what we did Monday. I'm going to put everything in a file, a folder rather, called prototype one. Everything we did last time. Now let's copy this. One of the first things that we can find is that in addition to doing sizes based on pixels, we could do sizes based on percents. So if we look at this version of the page, the first prototype, Notice that these boxes stay the same size. They don't vary at all, regardless of how big the window is. All right. One thing that we can do is we can make this a percentage. So that's what we're going to do in the second version of this is I'm going to just keep the same stuff, but I'm just going to change the CSS to use a percentage. Now, as I do this, I should only need to open up the CSS file in the editor. All right? I might open up the HTML document just to show you something, but I'm really not going to be editing the, C uh, the HTML document. So in this case, instead of saying a width equals 600 pixels, I could say the width equals, let's make it 
75%. And I'll do that for everything. Do that for the nav, do that for the section, and do that for the footer. All right. Now, if you notice that as the available space gets bigger, the width of those columns get bigger. And generally, that's a good thing, right? Because what that helps do is makes the, make the page take up the available space that it has. So if you're on a big, gigantic monitor, the page will be, the, the, these content areas will be very wide, so you can read across. If, however, you're on a phone, and we can get a sample of what this is going to look like on a phone by going to More Tools, Developer Tools, in in uh, Google Chrome and see what it would look like on a Pixel 2. Okay? That doesn't look bad on a Pixel 2. All right? One of our goals as we go forward, it's always been a goal of the web development. Let me back up. It's always been a goal of web development to make your page work regardless of the platform. In other words, whether you're on a Mac or a PC, your page should work. Whether you're viewing it via one browser or another browser, your page should work. That's always been a goal. But what has added some importance to that goal is the fact that many people now use mobile devices to browse the web. So therefore, you're not just concerned about making it work for different computers. You're making it, you want to make it work for mobile devices as well. So this isn't bad for a mobile device. There's things that we can do to make it better, but for now, this is not so bad. So that's one thing that we can do. We can use percentages instead of absolute sizes. And as you notice, at a certain size, the page sort of collapses a little bit. If you don't like that, what you can do is you can actually put a minimum width in it. So I'm going to put a width of 75% and maybe a min width of 550 pixels, let's say. In other words, I'll make it 75% of the available width, but I won't make it go any smaller than 550 pixels. So it will stay that big. And as I resize the window, it'll get bigger or smaller, but it won't get any smaller than a certain size, 550 pixels. All right. That's a real simple thing that we can do to make the page look a little bit different. And it's, it's good because it takes advantage of the available space that you have. Another thing that we can do is we can use a layout called a fixed layout. All right? Or a, uh, an, I'm sorry, fixed is something a little bit different. An absolute layout. An absolute layout is like this where we say specifically on the screen where we want these things. All right. Notice we didn't say anything about the position of these elements. We just said the width and everything sort of flowed from the top to the bottom. If you don't specify the position of something, and there's a few ways to specify the position, a web page follows what's called the flow layout. All right, and the flow layout is simply one thing, one block stacked on top of the other in a line. One block tag, that is, stacked on top of another block tag in a line. So if we don't specify anything, which we don't here, uh, it follows that flow. 
But there's a couple of ways that we can alter that position. There's actually several different ways. And one of them is by saying the position of the element from the top of the page and from the left of the page. Alternatively, we can specify the bottom and the right. But usually, we specify the top and the left. So let's say we had a wireframe that looked like this. We want our banner all the way across the screen. We want our net to be here. We want our content area to be here. And then finally, we want our footer down. If we look at some of the examples in CSS Zen Garden, <coughs> you'll notice that things have very specific layouts. So they may have used this, or they may have used some other technique. So what we're going to do is for each element, for each box, for each main section, we're going to specify how far from the top, how far from the left. How far from the top, how far from the left, and so on. All right? And we're going to specify that for each element. And then it's sort of glued down in that position, which is nice if you want a very precise layout, but it's bad because it doesn't give you flexibility. Now, there's other ways to get flexibility, like, for example, for mobile, uh, for the site being viewed on a mobile device. That's sort of, the, that's sort of a rule all right, with web development. There's always, uh, there's always other ways to do something, all right? So if you want your page to have a very rigid layout on a desktop, you can still make it flexible for a mobile device, even if you use fixed, by using one of these other methods that we'll talk about going forward in class. All right, so I'm going to make a totally new version of this prototype. And I'm going to edit the CSS. And honestly, I'm just going to start putting in top and left positions for these things. So I'm going to say generally not. About the only time the order matters is if you accidentally put the same thing in there twice. If I were to put, say, the background color of the body at the top and the background color of the body at the bottom, the bottom one would win. All right? Okay, interesting. Okay, interesting. So I'm going to make this top 10px, left 10px, position absolute. And I'll make the width be 800 pixels. Um, you could or you couldn't. In this example, I'm using, I'm using numbers, but you could also use percentages too. 
it, it does get a little confusing if you mix absolute numbers and percentages sometimes, uh, especially when we get into floating. Uh, but again, yeah, you, you could. You could use percentages. Uh, I'll, I'll change this in a minute here. Now, notice I only put a position on the top one, the header. All right? I did that deliberately because this isn't going to look good. All right? And I want to show you what happens if you give one thing a position and not everything else. All right? That way you'll recognize it if it happens to you. All right, so can we see what happened here? The header was put exactly where, where we told it to go, right? We told it to go 10 from the top, 10 from the left. But notice the navigation, that's the navigation here, is behind it, OK? That's because we didn't put any position to it. If you don't put position to an element, it falls into the same old pattern of the flow, like I said before, where it simply stacks blocks from the top of the page on down. So I gave a position to the header. I did not give a position to the nav or section or footer, and those remain in the flow. So if you see things like this, you probably forgot to give something a position that you wanted to. Now, sometimes, we'll see an example in a few minutes, or, or possibly next week, depends on how fast the rest goes, of where we are going to do, we're going to use this thing on purpose to achieve an effect, all right? But this isn't an effect that we want to achieve, right? This is because we forgot to do something. All right, so I'm going to go here, and I'm going to set the nav. And I'll give the nav a width of 200 pixels. And I'll give it a top of maybe 150 pixels. You can, but typically that is affected either with a relative position or a margin. So we'll talk about relative positioning, and then we've already talked about margin. If I wanted this like 10 below, 10 pixels below the header, I could use a relative position on this. All right? But I'm just working on, we're going to do an absolute example, then later on we'll do a relative example. Great question. And I'm just going to do these one at a time. You've got to remember to put in position of absolute. If we do that, well, that's where it puts the links. Well, those links, we now want to be oriented vertically, right? So we're going to go and we're going to change up the style rule for the links. And I still don't want a bullet point, uh, but I want to get rid of this to make it in line. So now they're stacked vertically, but I don't really like that. I am going to change the font size to make them 1.2M, and I'm going to give each Li a margin bottom of 10px to put some separation between them. All 
right. Not bad. What if I want these? Don't want them center aligned, so I'll get text aligned centered. All right. What if I want them to, I'll give a little bit more of a margin to make more space between. What if I want them to be a certain length, all be the same size? I could go with 150 pixels. didn't do anything. All right. Reason it didn't do anything is because A is a inline tag and not a block tag. And the width doesn't work for inline tags. So I can say display inline block. And what that will do is that will make these links sort of hybrid a cross between inline and block, has some characteristics of inline, some characteristics of block. But it will allow me to set the width. All right? OK. We'll leave it at that. We have our links going down the side. Now, my section, I'm going to give a width of let's say 500 pixels. I will give it a top of 150. A left of that other one was 200 pixels. Why? We'll give a left of 300 pixels. Position absolute. And that puts it over like that. Now, the only problem is with the footer. All right? And with the footer, what we can do is we can just essentially pop it way down at the bottom and let's try a couple things with that uh, top let's make this like let's guess at 800 See what that does. Yeah, not quite. Almost. All right little bit too much. All right, there we go. And of course, we can change some of the other things, which I'm going to encourage you to do. Don't just change that, you know, the layout and all that, but we can change the background image. We can change anything that we want to. So. Let's see. Um, I'm going to put a background image, but I'm going to put it on the header. I'm not going to put a background image on the whole page. OK? So let me go and let me get rid of the background image for the body. 
and let me give it a color. Let's go and look up some nice colors that go together. I can't type today. Try this one today. See if it's any good. Do I want to watch a tutorial? Nah. Press the space bar to generate color schemes. Well, that's kind of cool. Although, I like to have a little bit of input into, like, do I want it to be reddish or bluish or whatever. Can we do that? Have some parameters there. Adjust palette. Yeah, this isn't bad. Not my favorite one, but it's not horrible. So let's go and let's make the background of the page this color. And let's make the nav this color. Let's make our section this color. And let's make the footer that color too. And let's make the color this. All right. Save it. Let's see what we got. Not a bad looking page. How come that, how come my things don't have background? Oh, here's, here's a perfect case of this. I have background white on here. So the order did matter because the second one won. Let's go back to our color scheme and let's make our links. Let's make the background of the links this. And the color this.
And then we'll just switch that for the hover. That's something I generally like to do. Like when I hover, I like to switch the background and the foreground color. You don't have to do it that way, certainly. All right, let's see what that gives us. Well, not bad. Okay, now let's say we wanted to have a background image on the header. So, I don't know, what would make a nice kind of travel picture? A plane. Sounds good. Let's go and let's Google airplane. movie airplane. And let's find a big one. You know, you can filter on the size of the image by going up to more. I lied. Settings. I lied again. Tools. There we go. <laughs> it's only asked for large. And we can filter by labeled for reuse with modification. Yeah, let's we like this one? Yeah, let's pick that one. I'm going to edit it because that's a big image. Or it would have been a big image if I saved the right version of it. Okay, so I'm going to go and I am going to, first of all, resize this to only make it 800 pixels wide. Right now it is 900 some, so I'll make 800. And I'm going to cut it. So we just get a section of it. And then I'll save it. And I'll rename this to BG. Put it in there and change the header to say background URL bg.jpg. Thanks. All right. Doesn't look bad. We kind of lose it over there. Um, let's make the color.
this, that yellow or maize, so it shows up. All right, there we go. That's readable. All right, so this essentially, this is the same HTML as the other one, but it looks wildly different, right? Here is our first prototype. Here is our second prototype. All right. Now, you might say to yourself, all right, what if I wanted a different image on each page? Or at the very least, on Hawaii, I want a background image that looks like Hawaii. On Iceland, I want a background image that looks like Iceland. All right. How could we do that? Well, exactly. That's where we could put a small tweak in the HTML to go and put, add a, a, a style or a separate style sheet file specific to that. In fact, I'm going to do the second of those. I'm going to create my own HTML file because, again, I want to keep the HTML as close to the same as possible. So let me find a picture of Iceland. And We'll go to Tools, look for Large, I like this one. Same small. Oh, I got to click the download link. Oh, there we go. So let me rename that to Iceland. Now I'm going to create a whole new CSS file. You don't have to do this. You could actually use a style tag within the page. But I'm going to create that because what if I have a bunch of pages related to Iceland and I want the same look for all of those? So I'll go in and create my Iceland CSS. Let me look at this image. is really big, so I'm going to resize it to be 800 pixels wide. I'm going to crop out only part of it, the best part. And I'm going to put in my Iceland CSS simply for the header. All I'm going to have is the header. Because everything else I want to be the same. And I'm going to say I want the background for the header to be Iceland.jpg. And nothing else I have. So what's going to happen is the browser's first going to apply all these rules. And then it will apply the second style sheet to override the stuff in the first style sheet. So I'm going to go and make a tweak to the Iceland HTML. 
to include both those style sheets. So in other words, I want everything in the style sheet named style and then overrule part of the stuff in that with the stuff that's in this style sheet. So now if we look at Iceland, so on the home page we have that background, on Iceland we have that. That's a nice little thing that we can do to sort of give people the idea that they're in a different section of the site. All right. Uh, when we talk about good web design, we say that a, web uh, a website should look consistent. Consistent doesn't mean it has to look identical on every single page. It's okay to have some pages that look a little different if there's a reason for it. All right. And this is a nice just little touch that we can put in to say, okay, this page and other pages like it can have a slightly different look than the rest of the page on the site. Now, the rest of the pages on the site, again, still have that image. And we could do the same thing for Hawaii. We could do the same thing for these other countries. We could do something similar for single travelers or families, or just let them have this picture as a background picture. So we have a second version of this page. <coughs> and we could go on and on and on with this. We could change the font and, and so on. All right, we'll continue with this next week, because we're going to go through a bunch of other things. You are welcome to try playing with things on your own. Look up grid layout, look up float, look up fixed position. Uh, these are all things that you can look out and try on your own site. All right, we'll see you up in lab.